Tyler Donahue, again, he's an outfielder out of Upper Darby. And a stalker. 79. It's always fun to go first. Staying consistent at 79. Well, why not? Three for three. Hit the 79 mark. Now we're going to see him scoop and shoot again at outfield. I haven't been to the dentist in a <laughs> we, while, but. We're on, we're on camera, too, and we're ducking. Uh, Al, I don't uh, think I wore my cup tonight. I got plenty of padding here, so I don't think I'm going to get hurt. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we have Justin Shepard, a Monsignor Bonner, 6'1", 175. 81 on the velo. Looks bigger than 6'1". Heck, yeah, he looks big. Football player, too. Oh, he's a football player. Yeah, look at that. Quarterback. All right. That's my quarterback, man. What are you, T.O.? Yeah. All right. Flat 80 there, so sitting there 81, 80 miles an hour for Justin Shepard. Class of 23. Now hopefully he goes above our head because he's a big guy. Especially if he throws missiles on the field as a quarterback. He's got good length. Good pitcher's build, too. Yeah, I love the way he's uh, rotating to the ball. Donahue... Or Shepard, I should say, is actually listed as an outfielder. Dominic Benini out of Archbishop John Carroll. 5'9", 135. 80, 80 miles an hour. hour. Coming out strong out of the gates. <laughs> 78 miles an hour. And Five eight one sixty five. It's a middle infielder, outfielder. Again, Jake Koenig. Yeah, Koenig. He's an absolute physical specimen. He's a guy who was a terror with the bat last. He's sitting around seventy nine miles an hour. The velo. Strong lower half of the body as well. And seventy eight. So sitting at a seventy eight, seventy nine. There. He's gonna scoop and shoot a couple. We're right at the opening. I don't know if that's pretty smart yeah, of us well, or not. You know, that's good. Got to live hey, on the edge hey. a little bit. This portion brought to you by Fisher and Stasic Orthodontics. <laughs> good job <laughs> by him, though. This is great form. Getting the ball way out in front. Able to get through the baseball. Physical yeah, nice specimen. Work. All right, we have Brian Fitzpatrick. It's Patrick, also out of Upper Darby. He's a catcher outfielder. Stands at 6'2", 190. Oof. 84. Ooh, nice. The power. No, is that 84 again? All right. 83. Eighty-five miles an hour. Fitzpatrick standing at six-two. He's got good, good physique for his length.
Man, talk about <laughs> great reach, man. This, is a, this guy's got a long delivery. We can go a long way. All right, welcome back to the on-deck training facility. So we go right into the infield defensive showcase with Dante Wright at a Westchester East High School. 5'11", 155. He's a uh, really slick fielder. Um, <clears throat> had him over at shortstop most of uh, all last year playing up with the 22 team. He, uh, he can definitely pick it. He's got a quick release. Short delivery. He's got all the makings of a shortstop, that's for sure. It's the voice of Noah Clement. How we, Widener. How we doing, fellas? Good to see you again, brother. Yeah, it's great to be back. It's been too long. No doubt. Uh, Dante's going to get on the bump as well for us. He's just a uh, really good player, good athlete. And uh, kind of coming into his frame now a little bit, put on about 10, 15 pounds this offseason. So, uh yeah, we're looking yeah, for a big summer for him. Oh, who we have? Oh, uh, we got Liam Sayer up now. He's uh, one of a, he's a new guy here for on deck. We got him uh, got him coming over this year, and uh, I'm pumped to have him. Working with him a lot this off season, in the cage, in the field. He uh, he's a strong kid. Third baseman by trade could certainly play first as well. Probably second, also. Got a good third baseman frame. Good build, too. 5'9", 190. Ooh. 76, 76 on his velo. Staying consistent at 76. 78 now. Climbing the ladder. Yeah, when you're doing the winter workouts, it's always sometimes tough when you're in a combined space, trying to be deliberate with the backhand especially. No doubt. And, uh, you know, we had put a uh, an infield development off-season plan together for these guys. Kind of a lot on throwing, a lot on arm angle, wrist angle, good stuff like that. This is Jacob Koenig. Yeah, Koenig is – he's a guy now 75 miles an hour. He was uh, 78, 79 on his – outfield pull down there uh he's a guy that stood out in a big way in the summer on the circuit when mm -hmm. we were out there i mean every time this guy had somebody on base he was an rbi machine i uh i can't say enough great things about him he's <coughs> you know he play all nine positions for you and i truly mean that he's just competitor and great teammate and uh he he's really put the work in he wants to be the best version of himself as a ball player and and off the field as well He's, uh, he's a special kid. He was even getting after it up uh We're doing the strength and conditioning demos. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He clearly was not uh, happy about just having a sample size. Chris Chung out of Upper Darby. Chung's another one of those guys, kind of throw him all over the field, just an athletic kid. Yeah, listed as a... Pitcher, middle infielder, and center fielder. Yeah, he's been behind the plate for us also. Wow. <laughs> he's sitting there in the mid-70s <coughs> right now from a velo standpoint. Good athleticism, light on his feet. 76 now. You talk about infield development. I mean, these guys seem to be – very intent on keeping the weight off of those back heels. Absolutely, see a lot of good space. Yep, we under the heels. We work. Uh, we work a lot of footwork, and uh, and it's it's really shown to, to be an improvement not only for strength of throws but throwing accuracy. Um, these guys get themselves lined up, and um, you know I really appreciate them trusting me, and uh, you know they they've all become a lot better in the field. Being able to throw from multiple arm slots as well um, that's been very important. Know, in our throwing program, we got Sam to Nitz here. <laughs> Sam to Nitz is another guy. It's summer circuit. He turned oh, yeah. a lot of heads. He sure kind of had a bit of a coming out party this past uh, summer. No doubt. You see the frame. It's similar to Dante's a little bit. Um, probably right around 6'1", 6'2". It's a lot of weight to gain. He's a 24 or so. 
sitting consistently around 80 with his velo. Oh, yeah. 81 now. He's uh, also, you know. It's still sitting there at 80. Not many shortstops you get are left-handed bats, too. So him being a left-handed bat is something that a lot of college coaches are really going to like. Um, he's also got some really good foot speed. So he's a complete player. Nice work by Denitz. He's got plenty of time to get a lot bigger, too. And Colin Beal is here. Beal's listed as a catcher and a pitcher as well. That's an yeah, interesting combo. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, you know, versatility. And, and that's so important, you know, especially in the recruiting circuit, being able to play multiple positions is such an asset. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of schools, you know, recruit five or six shortstops and kind of spew them out in the infield, maybe make one an outfielder, maybe take one on the bump. So we have a lot of guys who are very versatile. It makes my job really easy writing a lineup card. Oh, plug and play. I mean, that's the secret sauce from a college standpoint. We talk about it all the time. What you are today it doesn't mean anything to the guy that needs to recruit you. Absolutely. The, the catcher's mindset, especially being on the mound, too, from a pitcher, I'm going to go out and guess he's a pretty good hitter. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Knowing what they're trying to do to you. And here we got Josh Lillis. <coughs> Josh is just – someone's going to be really happy with him. Shortstop, put him at third, put him at second, put him in the outfield. He's really good on the bump. He's really good behind the dish. It's just uh, – hmm. 81 miles an hour. He's another guy who's been – through a bunch of injuries and super resilient, getting back in the weight room, getting taking care of his body, and uh, paid off this winter. He's made some really good strides offensively, defensively, and weight-wise. So he's in he's in a really good spot. Yeah, he's built like a tank. Absolutely, he's uh, he's a physical kid, and he wants to win, and that's what we like over here. Uh, and I'll tell you, I would say pleasantly surprised. You usually see guys that are this big, they're not that flexible or athletic, but he seems to check the boxes in a lot of good ways in that department. Absolutely, and that's a testament to uh, to Taylor um, working with our guys. I know there's been a lot of high praise for him, but he really just does such a great job and gets gets our guys right for um, you know events like this where they have to show that off. So, all right, we're back with the catching showcase portion. Now we have Austin Morgan joining us. What's up? How you doing? Good. It's good. been a while. Good to man. see you again. Yeah, it's been a, been too long. It's been a while. I know. Too long. Too long. Um, now this is exciting stuff. I'm glad you guys could make it. Um, you know, and then this is my cup of tea, the catchers. So uh, it's exciting. Hundred percent, man. So we got Fitzpatrick right out of the gate here, working yeah. on his framing. Yeah. So we've had him for three years, and obviously with his frame, um, it's taken him a while. Um, but he's worked really hard. You know, obviously being a taller guy and catching, it's difficult. Yeah. You know to be able to throw down, to be able to receive. You know, I, I kind of think of him as a long and gangly kid. Um, but he's worked his tail off um, in the weight room physically to get stronger, get his wrist stronger, get his forearm stronger. Um, and it's really translated. And he's so much more confident behind the plate. Um, it, it's awesome to see. It's awesome to see. Starts off with 75. Awesome. Stayed with 75. Yeah. yeah. Um, just seeing him, like, now being able to stay in that stance. Yeah. Um, and his throwdown stance, stay in his legs, stay in his glutes. I mean, it's awesome. And obviously that's a translation from the lifting and being able to squat and, and doing those exercises properly. Yeah, a lot of. Um, so this kid's interesting. This is Connor Kelly. He's a 2025. Oh, wow. From Ridley High School. He <laughs> was the linebacker this year, led the high school in tackles. Um, I mean, he's just a, a freak. And. He got evaluated by Taylor. He, he's the most flexible person on our team. Wow. Being a linebacker football, you just don't see that, but it translates catching. Yeah. Um, he has all the natural raw traits and abilities that you want in a catcher. I mean, I think he's going to be a big-time player. Um, well, comfort know. with having a helmet on for sure, so you can't question the toughness. <laughs> That's true. You don't see many linebackers that aren't tough. That's for certain. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to see him uh, compete. 
at this level um, in this summer. I think he's going to turn some heads as a young kid over the time coming up. He already is. Yeah. <laughs> Where he really starts to develop. Yeah, exactly. Nice work by Connor Kelly. Indeed. Um, and what we have here, this is Colin Bielis. So um, Colin's new to the program. This is his first year. Um, he's actually teammates with Brian Fitzpatrick, Chris Chung. Um, so uh, he he's an interesting kid because he can do so much. So it's going to be interesting seeing, you know, how Coach Noah utilizes him this summer, shows off his ability to play multiple positions. Um, so I, I think it's it's interesting, and every team needs a guy like that. Yeah. You know? And going back into the multiple positions, it's not so much what you are now. It's what does the coach project you to be. Correct. Correct. And I think a young kid like this, um, when you're trying to go to the next level, and especially joining a program new, I think that's big. Being able to play multiple positions as you go to the next level, um, it's going to give Colin an opportunity to find a home and you know one coach might see him as a catcher another coach might see him as an outfitter someone might see him as a pitcher so mm -hmm. I think it's going to put him in a good spot all right so the catchers have gotten it done got a nice again small uh group tonight which we like because that's quality over quantity we right. talk about it all the time get to know a little bit more about these guys a little bit more of their story and I think that helps a lot of coaches in your guys eyes you get to wear a lot of hats going from running the program running the conditioning to putting the the other hat on, which is recruiting from a college standpoint, really makes you kind of see things a bit uh, differently. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. And, and having guys around us, uh, you know, obviously Coach Noah working with him and getting to know him, it's been neat picking his brain um, from an infielder standpoint, from a hitter standpoint, and getting that perspective. Uh, obviously, John Cowie probably didn't tell you, but, you know, he played professional baseball, so he went through the process. Yeah. He has a good idea of infield, hitting, throwing. Um, and then Coach Ford, who's going to hop on when the pitchers come up, he coached every sport at the college level, high school level. He played at Widener. He's an alumni. Um, so he can kind of give some experience to it. And then Charlie Long and next to him, uh, he's, he's a veteran coach, coach in the Catholic League for many years. So it's it's pretty nice to see and experience this with um, such good coaches and guys that are invested. You know, having guys out here this late at night on a uh, yeah. Monday night is pretty neat to see. Yeah.